Video number five, profiling the participants in the Run On Less event. WadiV is the company for this video. All of the previous companies in this event do their logistics with diesel trucks, and now they're transitioning to electric. WadiV, as the name might suggest, they only offer electric trucks. They're a startup with a unique business model. They call it truck as a service and charging as a service. They provide the electric trucks and they provide the maintenance, which should be less than a conventional diesel truck. They provide the charging at their hub near the port of Long Beach or one of their other locations coming soon. This is great news for companies who did not plan ahead. In my previous videos, I highlighted the need to plan early, plan often. If you didn't plan and thought you can switch to electric trucks overnight, you can't, but you can give Watt EV a call. Watt EV started off focused on charging as a service. If you're a fleet operator, rather than buying the charging hardware, working with the utilities, paying for installation and maintenance of the equipment, you can just pay Watt EV for access to one of their charging hubs. Unlike other companies that are installing just a few chargers in many locations, Watt EV's plans call for large charging hubs that are packed with their latest EV equipment. A view of their plans of the Bakerfield, California site has on-site solar generation, battery energy storage systems. Together, they form the foundation for a microgrid that can operate independent of the larger electrical grid. Later on, you'll see their first site near the port of Long Beach does not have on-site power generation. It gets all its power from the grid. 240 kilowatt chargers for light-duty fleet vehicles and personal use EVs. 360 kilowatt chargers are their main product right now for the semi-trucks. It has two ports or two cables. It can charge one truck at 360 kilowatts or two trucks simultaneously at 180 kilowatt each. They come from a partner called Charge America, who will likely provide a complete software and hardware solution. 360 kilowatt chargers are faster or as fast as any of the other truck competitors we've seen thus far, except for the Tesla Semi. However, Watt EV has plans to offer megawatt charging like Tesla also plans to offer. The difference is that Tesla currently uses their own megawatt charging plug. They've not released documents or given it a fancy name like NACS or NAX. The rest of the industry is moving to the megawatt charging system developed by the same consortium as CCS. This is the best look at MCS that I've seen. The station they showed is not installed. You can see it's sitting on a skid, but it's real. And that cable absolutely looks like an elephant's trunk. It's huge. Truck manufacturers are still developing their next-gen EVs to utilize this plug. Their first-generation trucks can't use megawatt charging. They max out at between 250 to 270 kilowatts. So Watt EV was created to accelerate the transition to electric heavy-duty trucking. And when we first started the company uh, several years ago, we wanted to be the main infrastructure provider. So we started off with the idea of building out truck charging infrastructure in strategically marked locations, with our first site starting in Bakersfield, another in San Bernardino, Gardena, and the one in Long Beach, which we're at today. We started with the idea of build it and they will come, but very quickly realized that we can't just build and have you know, the demand not generate uh, naturally. So that's when we started looking at electric truck as a service concept and how we can sort of prime the market and really accelerate the transition by bringing both the infrastructure and the trucks to help both the shippers and the carriers meet their sustainability goals. This brings us to the concept of truck as a service. No waiting in line for your truck order to get built. They already have them. No training your mechanics to maintain or repair these new trucks. They'll take care of that too. They will also bundle in charging as a service into one monthly payment. I said it's an easy monthly payment, not a cheap monthly payment. The advantage is that you can be up and running in days, not taking many months or even years. Watt EV is currently running with a new truck that is new to this series, the Nikola Trey Bev. You're probably aware of their journey. Founder Trevor Milton is now in jail for fraud. The rest of the company pressed on and managed to launch a battery electric truck. They also have plans for hydrogen fuel cell trucks, but that's for another video. 
This series is all about BEVs because they are far, far ahead of hydrogen vehicles. Nikola is based on a truck from the European company Iveco. That proven cab over design is delivered without a powertrain and gets converted to a battery electric by Nikola in Arizona. Think of it like the original Tesla Roadster. They took a Lotus and packed it with batteries and an electric motor to get their start. Unlike the established Freightliner and Volvo trucks I profiled earlier, Nikola has a startup mentality and they want to take on Tesla. Their range and battery pack size approaches the Tesla Semi. It can charge faster than the Freightliner or Volvo, but it's not as fast as a Tesla. I assume that Nikola is also working on megawatt charging for their model, but first they have to keep building what they have to generate revenue and stay in business. One of the knocks against battery electric tractors is that they weigh more than a diesel powered truck, so you can't haul as much weight in the trailer. If you're hauling potato chips, that's probably not a problem. They're light and they're limited by volume. If you're carrying soda, that's a totally different story. You can't pack the trailer from floor to ceiling with liquids. Truck manufacturers don't advertise the weight difference. They do tell fleet operators that information when they're quoting new business. Watt EV gives us a peek at that information. A 53-foot dry van is a term for what I would picture as a trailer. They say it can be loaded with up to 40,000 pounds. That same size trailer with a diesel tractor can be loaded to about 43 to 46,000 pounds. Based on this, if you're carrying dense cargo, it needs to be reduced by about 10% to accommodate the heavier battery electric tractor. That doesn't sound terrible, but trucking is highly optimized industry where every little percent count. Watt EV is running Nikola trucks currently, but they also have Volvo trucks on order to add to their fleet. Watt EV is currently a privately held company, but they have all the makings of one that will try to go public soon. Business models that are blank as a service get all the attention of Wall Street. Given the improvement in tech sector stocks, I'm calling my shot here and saying that by the end of 2023, they're going to try to go public. It's an interesting business model. I think it works well in high truck areas like Long Beach. They talked about expanding to other parts and other ports on the east and west coast. My concern is not where, but when they charge. Their business model seems to encourage high power charging during the day at one of their hubs. That is the most expensive time to charge when demand is at its peak. High powered daytime charging should really only be used when necessary and rely on overnight charging when rates are lowest. The microgrid shown in the rendering could help offset that, generating their own energy during the day and storing cheap nighttime electricity and batteries for use later. Well, that's my Mike the Stock Geek portion of this video. I hope you found it informative. If so, you know what buttons to tap. Thank you for watching.